How's it going guys? This is Dreadnought. I'm doing a Diablo Inferno run this time and this is actually right before the 1.0.3 patch so there's some minor differences but I'm just pointing out here some of the skills that I'm going to be using for this fight specifically uh, not changing up my builder gear that much I am using the three defensive passives, the toughest nails um, whatever the other armor one is in Superstition and I'm using Leap with Iron Impact yeah, Ground Stomp with Wrenching Smash War Cry with Impunity um, Ignore Pain with uh, Lifesteal Rune Frenzy with Sidearm and Wrath of the Berserker with Insanity so I do another version of this uh, where inst instead of using wrenching smash I use uh, battle cry to increase damage by 30% I tried that twice before doing this run and I wiped both times on the second phase when I had to fight evil me and so I changed to wrenching smash and down Diablo I've beaten him now with the war cry also I can do Diablo a little bit faster with the war cry but I'm much more likely to not wipe if I use the the wrenching smash with the the stomp so that's the build I'm rocking here I have this is before the attack speed nerf actually the day before the attack speed nerf so you'll notice my s swings are still pretty fast um, but he does do a little bit additional damage back before the patch but not something ridic ridiculously noticeable. He's almost the same fight before and after the patch because of the damage nerf that I got and the damage nerf that he got kinda equaled us out a little bit. With my Warcry here I'm at around a thousand all resist and I'm at around 40,000 health and you could do this fight with a little bit less all resist and a little bit more life um, and you'll see that actually I can take some of his I can take his hits and regen my my life pretty fast. I have around a thousand life on hit, and I'm swinging around three times a second, so I can get my health back pretty quick. For barbarians trying to get through Inferno that are going through the the rage of dying a lot and not being able to take some of the big hits, I recommend using a one-hander and shield which is what I've been doing for a long time. Uh, if your gear is already really nice, you might want to switch to a two-hander now that the 1.0.3 patch is out because enemies in Acts 2, 3, and 4 do a substantial, uh, substantially less damage than they did before the patch. And so as long as you have enough resistances, you can get rid of that shield and throw on a two-hander what I do is I try and switch up my passes before I, I change my main abilities. So if things are a little bit too easy, then I'll take off the three defensive passives and put on the three of the, my damage passives, like Berserker, uh, Berserker Rage, or um, Ruthless. Um, any of the damage ones really are, are going to make a huge difference to your, your stats instead of using the defensive. So me and Archon have been doing Act 1. Uh, and I switch up to my offensives. I take the uh, 300 life per hit gem out of my weapon. And I put in the 70% crit hit damage. And I'm going to be getting a two-hander here soon to do Act 1 and 2 runs a lot faster than I am right now. I really don't have that much damage in this video. I'm probably at like 16,000 DPS here. And it's actually more than you need. Uh, you can do this with about 10,000 probably. The only real issue would be uh, the overlap you have with Diablo and the min and minion that he spawns right here in phase two. If you can't get the minion down fast enough, then it can be a little bit of a hassle. But there's no real minimum damage you have to do against Diablo. T or I'd say 10,000 is probably close to a, a minimum amount, and so that this fight wouldn't be extremely frustrating. But it's all about defense when you're the barbarian. You can't. This isn't the the demon hunter strat where you get to kite around everything and hope you don't get one shot. You just got to build yourself up to take enough of these hits. So to explain m my rotation here, what I'm I'm doing is I try to keep leap and wrenching smash for the situations that I need them. 
if Diablo is just using his normal swipe attack at me, I can regen life faster than he can kill me, so I don't worry about using my, my defensive cooldowns for his normal attacks. When he drops this ring of fire on the ground, uh, the best option is just to, to get out of it and then regen your life by hitting him with your life per hit or whatever regen that you're using. Um, but the leap is awesome with the iron impact for that because you can get out fast and then right away you have 300% additional armor and you can use that time to get your life back. The wrenching smash is the second way that you can get your life back. I had a little double jump there. I don't know if you noticed that me and my mini me just jump at the same time there. I thought that was pretty cool. But, but he dies. And uh, yeah, so leap, wrenching smash, great for giving yourself a few seconds to get your life back up with your whatever life regen you're using. Um, the I'm not a huge fan of lifesteal as much as I am. I have lifesteal on my weapon, but not on my belt. I'm more of a, a life per hit. Even with the attack speed nerf, I still prefer life per hit. I'm getting, on average, more life back for the amount of life per hit I can get compared to the amount of lifesteal. So, not a horrible thing if you have lifesteal on your belt and weapon. It's nice to have, but I rely on, on life per hit. If you want to get uh, some more survivability and you're not sure what first step to, to make, make sure you have a shield that has a high block percentage and block amount. That's the most important things on your shield before armor and all resist. So if it has over 20% block percent, that's pretty good. And if you're blocking over 3 to 4k, that's a good block amount. And then secondary stats would be armor and all resist to get on there or vitality if you're not up to around 40k. The reason that stacking vitality is a little bit better as a barbarian than it is with other classes is because of the abilities that he has to um, regenerate percentage of max life, specifically his provocation um, and, oh sorry, revenge provo with the provocation rune and furious charge with the dreadnought rune. Both of those you can, based on how many enemies you hit, you can increase your health by 5 to 8 percent of your max life per enemy hit. So hitting, you know, 12 enemies with the 8% per, per enemy, you can heal yourself to full. And it's not uncommon for revenges to heal me for almost 50% of my max life. So the, ma the more vitality you're stacking, the bigger those heals are going to be from your abilities. Uh, I know with Monk, it's nice to have more you know, dav damage avoidance and, and all resist. But with Barbarians, it is actually nice to stack that vitality because he has ways to get that health back. But for Diablo and other single target fights, Revenge and Furious Charge are not the best because you're only going to be hitting one target. And so that's why it's nice to have those resistances, your shield, um, clutch, ignore pains to, uh, with the life regen. Um, so this is not a fast Diablo fight. I know there's Barbarians that have posted their you know, five second Inferno Diablo kills. Uh, I don't have that Rockstar Baller gear, and if you don't either, then this will probably be useful for you. That move he did right there, don't eat that every time. I had to eat it, but if you have Ignore Pain, it's not too hard to eat. I don't do an awesome job in Phase 3. I actually get caged three times by Diablo. His cage ability does the most damage, but it does not kill you. He'll get you down to one health. And as long as he doesn't hit you again before you heal, then you're good. So that's why it's awesome to have that wrenching smash and the, sorry, the the ground stomp and leap, because if you do get caught by those, uh, you always have a chance to either stun them, leap away, get to one of the the health things, hit a potion or whatever it is you need to do. But yeah, the DL fight pretty straightforward. Um, a lot of things changing with the 1.0.3. I know there's a lot of rage about it, about um, how Inferno wasn't hard enough as it was, and so uh, with 1.0.3, a lot of the hardcore players are a little upset. Um, not hardcore mode, I mean hardcore players. Um, are some things I'm not really happy about. Obviously, I was a attack speed stacker, so I took a huge nerf when it came out, but I also did feel that attack speed was due for a nerf. I'm not going to take a stance on if the nerf was too too much or not because uh, they nerfed Acts 2 through 4 so much that that it's hard to complain about the, the attack speed nerf that they sent out. 
So yeah, if you're noticing that your damage is your weapon damage dropped in DPS, uh, it's not because your specific piece of gear got nerfed or there's a glitch. It's because your gear has attack speed on it, and the, the amount of attack speed was reduced by 40%. Uh, at least that's what they're saying. Uh, Archon thinks he has a couple pieces that, uh, or he knows he has a couple pieces that were reduced more than 40%. So. But overall, with the 1.0.3, the most uh, big thing, thing I'm excited about is the group play that's going to be able to, to happen now. It was such a pain as a barbarian or monk to do inferno group play because of the damage increase that everyone got. And I know the damage increase came, or the damage decrease came just before 1.0.3, but I still feel like it was the 1.0.3 patch that that was a part of. So if you haven't done group play in a while, it might be a good time to start up again because the enemies do not do additional damage per person that joins the game now in Inferno. So you can have a four person game, enemies do just as much damage, they only have a life increase. And if you've played all or most of the characters, you know that uh, characters have uh, really big buffs and uh, multipliers that they can bring into the group. So if you have an organized group, it's much better to do uh, group play, uh, four person that is, than it is to do solo. Now, the only reason that won't be true is if there's if you're much more overgeared than the three people you're playing with and you could be slowed down or if you're not an organized group or you have you know you're just in a public game and people you don't know and people are just sitting in town doing nothing so that's I don't play many public games for that reason people are uh, it's much more common to, to group up with people that are below your ability but yeah if you have friends to play with and you weren't playing with them before because of the group buffs were too strong uh, play with your friends again. That's the point I'm trying to make. Anyway, this is Inferno Diablo. Uh, if you've beaten Inferno Diablo, you know it's a little bit of a, a letdown because there's so many elite groups in Act 3 and 4 that would destroy Diablo if they had the chance. Those, the Soul Rippers when they have the Molten and Plague and Vortex and Frozen. Much more challenging than the Diablo fight. But that is it. Me and Archon are going to Florida for a couple weeks. We live in Vegas, but we're going down to Florida to visit our sister. And so we're not going to be coming out with a lot of videos for the next couple weeks. But we promised to get out some hot new videos as soon as we get back. So hit the subscribe button up top if you haven't done so already to get our next videos right as they come out.